we have To The Bone, the newest album from Stephen Wilson, who this is at least the second time we've covered material by. Yeah, he's part of Blackfield as well, which he covered a while ago. Yeah. And is Porcupine Tree still a thing, or are they... Uh, I think it's still a thing, it's just on momentary hiatus whilst he's working on all the other projects he's working with. So basically, it's in the system of a down state. Because how long has that hiatus lasted for? Like a decade now? <laughs> Possibly longer? Yeah, it's been quite a while. I mean... Because I want to say their last album came out 2005. Um, it came out in... Uh, yeah, okay, it was 2005. Jeez. Yeah. Long time. <laughs> so they're even... Oh, God. So, next running joke, once Tool actually release their new album, if that ever happens. Well, since the release being the case of we're all hiatus, I'm like, Tool, who are like, next album's out when it's out. Yeah. So, basically, if Tool releases their next album before System of a Down do, then System of a Down will be the next running joke. Anyway, to this album. So, yeah, um, I'm just thinking through. You will pick up on a lot of politically motivated lyrics. Yeah, I did notice it's quite a uh, political edge to it. Yeah, um, specifically sort of personal distaste towards attitudes presented and how at every turn people were either blind or willfully ignorant to what was being quite blatantly shown to them. I'm not going to specify any particular political group because, well, I think it's fair to say that everyone was blinded whichever way you go about it. <laughs> Uh, once again, we're back on politics cars. Yeah, but um, except it's the music's fault this time. Yeah, <laughs> that that's the that's the thing. At least in this case, we can go. Don't blame us. Blame the music. But yeah, the one thing you can tell is that even just from the first song, that this is Stephen Wilson, as you might have guessed by being a Stephen Wilson album. Yeah, because it sounds like Stephen Wilson. Well, it basically sounds like slightly shorter Porcupine Tree songs. <laughs> yeah, I can hear it. It's just more Porcupine Tree than it does um, Blackfield, I'd say. Mm. Well, Blackfield was very much a pop-oriented uh, project. It's designed for shorter songs, that sort of thing. Although, most of the songs on this album aren't especially long. I mean... No, I wouldn't say they're long, they're, they're relatively succinct. Yeah. I uh, Let's see, there's... Two songs which are just under seven minutes. One song that's over six minutes. Two songs that are about six minutes. Two songs that are just over five minutes. Um, one song that's four minutes. One song that's just under five. It, it goes all over the place lengthwise. <laughs> Comparing it to something like Hawker Country, we would quite often have songs like eight, nine, ten, whatever. Yeah. Is notably shorter. Mm. I think it's still got its very much proggy kind of edge to it, so I can't imagine prog working that well when your songs are like four minutes long. Yeah, but I think part of it is that there's clearly a passion for the genre, and that's why even when they're shorter songs, they can still manage to have that prog feel to them. Mm. Um, I'd say certain songs are more porcupine tree sounding than others. Mm, I'd agree with that. I mean, especially the first track, the title track, does sound very porcupine tree ish. Mm -mm. Uh, I'd say more the same asylum as before, and people who eat darkness are. With a bit of interesting song titles. Yeah. Which <laughs> porcupine tree has done before as well. Mm. Um, Song of I is a really cool one just generally speaking, has got this very sinister feel, sort of, sort of sinister reflection on social anxieties and facades. It's possibly one of my favourites on the album. I'm not even sure what I'd say my favourite songs, actually. I wouldn't even, I'm not entirely sure what I'd say my favourite songs are. Mm -hmm. It's all around pretty solid all the way through, but nothing, I think the problem I have with the album, it doesn't necessarily, nothing stands out on itself. Mm. I, I think 
that that's one of the things that what I tend to do when we're going through these albums is I'll put the songs on my MP3 player so that they can just play at random. So there's never a um, I'm able to let them all stand on their own merits. Yeah, that works. Um, one thing I will say is I'd possibly say that the album would have been better off if it had been split into two parts. Um, possibly, yeah. A bit like, uh, oh, trying to think of the band's name. Um, it's one of the bands we covered, um, the post-metal band. Oh, um, well, anyway, Cot Luna. That's the only one I can think of we've done. Uh, no, this uh, this was one that I didn't particularly care for. Uh, Alcest? No. Uh, uh, mono? Mono, that's the one. Probably Mono, yeah, because that's got the, uh, yeah. the two album thing, yeah. Yeah. Um, sort of like how Mono did it, where they were connected albums, but there were different sounds to the two albums. And I think this would have been better served if it had been like that, because the way I'd potentially rearrange some of the songs would result in there being two endings and things like that. Like, um, for example, Pariah. That feels very much like an ending song. Mm, but so does Song of Unborn. So it's one of those. It was. Uh, well, I mean, essentially you can move it around. Could, we keep it as one album, but I say move things around a bit, have like an interlude in the middle, maybe. We'll do the same kind of job. Yeah. But that I would rearrange the song slightly. I mean, that's why I've been sort of umming and ahhing about how I'd score this, because of wanting to rearrange things slightly, but not to an extent where it would dramatically affect the score. Because I still really like the album, especially the songs with the female vocalist. I'm trying to think about what other songs Stephen Wilson's used for your vocalist. I know he has. I can't think of them right off the top of my head right now. Um, he's done so much. He's put a shit ton of work. I mean, this is like the fifth album he's done personally, I think. Probably. Plus like three Backford albums, plus just, like, like a two dozen Pooh Pointry albums or whatever. Yeah, this is the fifth album he's done solo. He's put out a ton of work. Yeah. And the thing is, it's one of those things where I've yet to encounter anything produced by Stephen Wilson that I haven't enjoyed. He's put out a lot of good stuff over the years. Mm. Now, I'm not saying that there isn't stuff he's done that I don't like. I've just yet to hear it. <laughs> he's got a lot of kind of more experimental stuff going on somewhere in some places and more standard stuff in other places. It's, still, it's kind of an interesting way of doing things where he's managed to be very experimental and weird in some ways, but also managed to have a kind of signature sound as well. Mm -hmm. So, everything... It's kind of like Devin Townsend, I guess, in the same kind of way, in the fact that you do a lot of different things, but still kind of have the same kind of core sound. Yeah. You can tell it's him, but it still sounds quite significantly different to other things he's done. Yeah. It's it's one of those things of having an identity kind of thing. But not uh, letting it be your only identity. Mm. Some artists, you have the problem of, this is our sound, and every single album sounds the same. <laughs> <laughs> Um, just looking looking her up, uh, Ninette Taeb sang on two tracks on Stephen Wilson's 2015 album, Hand Cannot Erase. That's where I've heard it, because my dad has that album, so I've heard that. Um, she also featured on a release by Wilson on Four and a Half, on the new version of Don't Hate Me. Okay, she has some work done before. Yeah, it's the um, Hand Cannot Erase that I was thinking of. That is an album I've heard. Mm. I'd say you probably this, this album's really better than that one. Awesome. Yeah? Yeah. I thought I was kind of going into that directly from documentary, so I wasn't sure what to expect, but this album seems more consistent than that one did. Mm -hmm. It's been ages since I listened to it. It's been quite like the start of last year. Uh, I haven't listened to it, so I can't really comment. Well, I don't think I've listened to it. With with everything I've listened to over the past few months, it's, I I can't remember what I've heard and what I haven't. <laughs> what is you've heard? Music. This is why whenever I say about doing these reviews and it's sort of like, oh, what music do you cover? It's sort of like, everything. And by that I mean everything! Five million things. Some of them are good, some of them are not. Actually, this one is pretty good. Mm. Um, 
I suppose we should get to the rating. Uh, what would you give it? Um, I'll probably settle around 3.5 or so, but I reckon it's probably going to grow on me, because a lot of Pokemon Trust Tree stuff does. Mm. I've listened through it a couple of times, one of which was today, so... Yeah. I mean, I've listened to it a few times, and initially I gave it a 5 out of 5, because I was really impressed by it, but reconsidering things and how, how I'd probably rearrange some of the songs, that sort of thing, that doesn't knock it down by much. That knocks it down to a 4.5 out of 5. Which is if it's not a perfect album, but it's still great. Yeah. I reckon my score may well go up to a 4, eventually. Mm. Of course, where I'm concerned, the perfect album scores are when I give it a 6 out of 5. <laughs> yeah. Well, this 5 is more a case of, this is good and has very few flaws. 6 is like, there is nothing wrong with this. <laughs> yeah. It's a bit like... um. Oh, can't think of the name of the Judas Priest album. Um, well, the one that has that one song on the end that doesn't quite fit. Yeah. Um, Redeemer of Souls, that's the one. Um, basically, six out of five without the very last song, five out of five with the last song. Because, well, the thing is, I can give it a six out of five without the last song because the last song is on a bonus disc. <laughs> Uh, good old bonus discs. So, if you were to take it purely on the merits of the album proper, that would be a 6 out of 5. But anyway, I'm getting sidetracked, as I always do. Yeah. But, yeah, this album, I'd say it's definitely a 4.5 out of 5. It might end up growing on me, and it bumps back up to a 5. But only time can tell there. Only time can tell. Could incidentally sounds like a porcupine tree sometimes. I'm pretty sure they have something like that. I think they do, yeah. <laughs> um, but anyway, yes, before we get sidetracked completely, it's a pretty good album. If you like Walk of Entry, check it out. If you like Blackfield, check it out. If you like Stephen Wilson, check it out. If you like Prog, check it out. Yep, certified Prog. It's definitely Prog. Yeah. Um, anyway, next album. <laughs> Down and down and down and down we're drilling through their stars. 